This is the second part of a series of three videos where I'm testing out OM Systems' new 150-600mm f5-6.3 to lens used in combination with the new OM-1 Mark II. In this video I'm trying out as a field test with the new OM Systems lens telephoto lens that they've brought out. It's the 150-600mm lens. Now, I don't actually have this lens. OM Systems have, have sent it to me to try out for a couple of weeks. And it's an amazing piece of kit. Where I'm actually at today is Elmley Marshes. And when the OM-1 first came out, this is where I came and actually did a video. And the great thing about this location is you, sometimes you get the birds coming very, very close indeed. Other times they're, they're a lot further away, but with a 150 to 600 mil on micro four thirds, it's the equivalent of 300 to 1200 on a full frame. So that gives me a huge range. So the birds that are far away I can photograph and the birds that are closer as well. Now, where this lens will sit is in between the 100 to 400 and the 150 to 400. I have the 150 to 400 4.5 and I won't be changing it for this. I don't actually own this lens. They've sent it to me for a couple of weeks to really sort of take some pictures. They want sort of feedback and things like that. Um, but where this lens will really appeal is to people who've got say 100 to 400, but ideally they would like the 150 to, to 400 hell of a price range difference between the 100 to 400 which is probably about I'm not sure exactly but it's over a thousand pounds 1200 something like that the 150 to 400 is six and a half grand now this will sit in between the two and it will appeal to people who ideally would like a 150 to 400 but they can't really afford it. I mean, it took me a year and a half to save up for a 150 to 400, so <laughs> it's, it's not a cheap lens. But having said this, this will mark it somewhere above two grand, I think. Um, it's not actually you know, on sale yet, um, but as I say, I've got this lens for about two weeks before it's actually sort of on release. It's at the, the maximum zoom, the 600mm end of the zoom, it's 6.3, which isn't a bad aperture really. Now, in great light, in good light, it's not a problem at all. Now, I've been struggling today as far as the light goes. The day I picked, unfortunately, is not ideal conditions for bird photography. It's windy, and you can see that it's quite cloudy and overcast. Now, I've had to push the ISO up and because I'm using the OM-1 Mark II I can easily push that up to 3200 for some of the pictures I've been doing at 4000 today ISO so not too much of a problem but it really has been a test for it today in these conditions I mean I could go out on a bright sunny day when I can easily get shutter speeds of 4000 per second or all that but today it's been a real test for it. But having looked at the pictures on the back of the screen, I've been very impressed with them. They look very, very sharp indeed. And the autofocus on the new camera has been improved. And I'm going to do a video on the new camera, but this is primarily about the, 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 the new lens. Now, it's, it's a lot heavier than the 100 to 400. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, a solidly made lens when you when it came out the box and i picked it up it just feels quality it's it's well made the it's got the it has got it's got the normal sort of um you know lens cap on it that you get on the on the professional cameras um and um it's it's a brilliant piece of kit now i've been using it today for stills for birds on the ground and, and in the pools and that but I've also been doing birds in flight with it as well and I've been quite impressed with it it certainly locks on very well I've also been shooting some video on it now the autofocus on the OM Mark II has improved and there is death although video still is not as uh, it could always be better certainly still pictures it just jumps onto it straight away no problems at all 
but I've actually been quite impressed with it for video today. I've got some quite nice videos that I've been taken, and, and they've not been on a video head or a tripod. They've been taken out of the car window, resting the lens on a beanbag. So I'm going to drive on up to where the car park is and see if I can do some birds in flight with this lens. But I think if the birds perform, this will lock onto them very, very well indeed. In this part of the video, I'm going to be showing you stills and video taken using the 150 to 600 mm and explain why I think it's an ideal lens for this sort of location. When you're walking around or driving around a nature reserve, one of the main problems you often have is getting close enough to the birds to get a frame filling shot. This is especially true when you have smaller birds such as this skylark. Although the lens is in effect a long telephoto zoom, its weight makes it still suitable to comfortably hand hold without the need for carting around a heavy tripod all day long. With the huge focal length that you get with this lens, it would be an ideal lens for people who like to do most of their nature photography at UK reserves. So now I'm going to briefly talk about Elmley Reserve and the best way that I have found to photograph there. When you arrive at Elmley, you drive along a two mile track across open marshland before reaching the reserve car park. It's best to drive along this track with both windows wound down and you're constantly looking for birds to photograph either side of the track. On reaching the car park, you can either park up and walk to the hides on the reserve or turn the car around and drive back along the open marshland track. I usually do this and will spend most of a large part of the day driving slowly up and down, down this track photographing from the car. When driving across this track, you are allowed to pull over to stop to photograph the birds from the car, but you're not allowed to get out of the car. The track is just wide enough for you to pull over to one side so that other cars can pass by you. There are lots of opportunities to photograph the birds on the marshland, as well as in the small lagoons either side of the track. You never know when a photographic opportunity will present itself or on which side of the track so that's why when driving along it's best to have both the drivers and the passengers window wound down and to have the camera all set up ready and resting on the passenger seat. On the driver's side I usually have a beanbag on the windowsill to rest the lens on. This gives a very steady support. But when photographing out on the passenger side window, you have to handhold the lens. Having said that, when I first drove onto the track, I forgot to wind down the passenger side window. This marsh harrier flew past on the left hand side, and because I would not have had time to wind down the window and take the shot, I had to photograph through the glass of the car window. Because of this, the quality is not brilliant but not bad, all things considered. Because the birds are used to seeing cars driving along and stopping along this track, they have become quite accustomed to this and do not fly away. Some birds are quite close to the side of the track, whereas other birds can be a lot further away. And this is where the fantastic zoom range that you get with that 150 to 600 mil really pays dividends over a fixed focal length lens. Driving along this two mile track can sometimes take quite some time, although this is dependent on how many times and for how long you stop to take pictures. Often when you photograph a bird, it's worth sitting and watching for some minutes because you never know what may develop. Although I've been to Elmley before, I've previously only visited in the springtime. On this occasion, it was early January and I was amazed at the number of curlew present. There were loads of them, and some amazingly close to the track. Once I had some decent still images, I started to shoot some video. I 
I came across this kestrel sitting quite close onto a post by the side of the track and decided to stay with it to see if I could get a shot of it as it flew off. It sat there for about five minutes before finally deciding to take flight and I wanted to get it as it flew off. Keeping your concentration when hand holding a lens for any length of time can be quite difficult. It certainly was on this occasion because I was photographing from the driver's side out of the passenger side window so I could not rest the lens on a beanbag but had to hand hold it. Because I did not know how long the Kestrel was going to sit before taking flight I would certainly have missed this sequence if I had been relying on my own reaction time. Using Pro Capture meant that when the Kestrel flew I would not miss the action. The Kestrel continued to hunt over this area of the reserve and later on I came across it hovering, again photographing out of the passenger window while sitting on the driver's side. The Kestrel hovered for a good minute or so, so after having taken a burst of stills I then pressed the red record button to shoot video. Getting smooth video whilst hand holding is very difficult and there is nothing worse than watching video footage that jumps about all over the place and that's why most people shoot video on a tripod. Obviously using a tripod in this situation was completely out of the question. One way to smooth video out when hand holding is to shoot in slow motion. As the Kestrel was reasonably stationary once I locked onto the focus, I shot the sequence at 120 frames per second, which gave an acceptable clip. Shooting in slow motion often gives a very nice effect. Despite the dull weather and windy conditions, it was a very productive day. It gave me a good opportunity to test out both the new lens as well as the new camera. In the next video in this series, I'll be photographing shorted owls in flight. I'll be using the OM-1 Mark II and both the 150-600mm plus my own 150-400mm plus the 125 extender. It should make a very interesting comparison. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to be notified of future uploads. Thanks for watching.